Okay, so let's continue just taking a look at methods. Okay, so as I said last time, um, methods is the name that Java generally uses for this thing. Uh, it also means the same as a function or a procedure. Okay, it's essentially the same idea. And it's something we talked about back when we talked about classes. Methods are uh, things you can do. Okay. In other words, methods are actions, or they're verbs, if you were to use an English class. Right? Like run, jump, punch. Methods are action events that do things. Okay. When we relate them to math, as I said before, it's just like in math when you have a function, okay, it, it performs an action. It does something. This particular math function does addition, right? And a couple terms we needed to know with methods is that there were these things called parameters slash arguments. which are the data you pass into a method. It's the, the data that's given to a method. And then methods also return values. It gives you something back. And sometimes there are no parameters. And sometimes it gives you nothing back. Sort of like, oh, never mind. I was going to make a joke there. Um, OK, so here I drew this fancy diagram to explain the th four of the methods we made last time. We made a method called end. You can see end right here. Okay? End is a method that has no inputs. Nothing goes in the brackets, and it has no outputs. It doesn't return anything. But it performs, a, uh, it performs an action. It terminates the program. That's what end did. But in terms of inputs, outputs, it had none. Okay? Now let's take a look at this one called make stars that we made. Make stars, which you can see right here, has one input, an integer, but it has no output. It doesn't return anything. Then we had one called make thing. Make thing also had no outputs, but this time it had two inputs, an integer and a string. And again, if you think of methods as little machines or little, they're like programs within the program, you're feeding these two inputs in and it does something with them. And then finally, rand int, or ran, I think we called it random has two inputs, a high and a low, and it sends back a, uh, a value. It returns a value. OK, so there's a summary of that. Now, if I go to the next uh, thing here, here again, it's that idea that you can have methods with no inputs, no outputs. No inputs, it could also just have an output, or it could have inputs and no outputs, or it could have both inputs and outputs. It's what you need it to do, right? Sometimes it needs to do different things. Okay. Oops. Oops, I don't want to start from the beginning. That wouldn't be useful. We want to start from right where we left off, right here. OK, so today I just want to go over this last little piece of it and a little bit of the philosophy to end it. Overloading a method. Okay, What overloading means, and this is a little more of an advanced concept, is you can create more than one method that has the same name. But in order to do that, in order for you to have two methods with the same name, they have to have different parameters, OK? So let's try this. Let's go back to our example. Oops. And we wrote this example last time, with all this stuff. And one of the methods we wrote was output. What I'd like you to do is, under the method output, I want you to write it again. Private static void output. String text. And it'll give you an error because it'll tell you, well, you can't do this. You can't make 
two things called output. That's like making two variables with the same name. It won't allow it unless the parameters are different. So let's make the parameters different. Instead of a string of text, let's make an integer called number as the parameter. And then it's fine. And it just needs the one line. You can just basically copy the same line as uh, an output and just switch text to number. Okay. But this now is a way to output an integer. So what we have here is two methods with the same name. The only difference between them is the parameters. This process is called overloading. You are overloading the output method by creating two different versions of it. And you know what? You've already seen this before. You just didn't know you saw it before. Because I'm just going to show you, you don't have to type this in. When you use J Option Pane, and you went to, for example, show message dialog, which some of you have been using now for your programs, you saw with show message dialog, there was three different versions of it that you could use. You could use show message dialog with just a message, or show message dialog with a message and a title, or with a message and a title and more and more. The only di these are all called show message dialog. The difference is the parameters. The parameters are different. If you do that, you are doing what's called overloading. And it can be very useful to you, okay? can be very useful to you to build up a whole bunch of methods. Rather than think of different names, like output1 or output2, you can just use overloading, use the same name, and just swap the parameters around a little bit. And then Java will figure it out. So, for example, and again, you guys don't need to do this, but I can output, and if I use a string, whatever that string is, like just the letter A, and then I call output, and I give it a number, it will work. Because what it'll do is when Java sees this code right here, it says output A, it takes a look at the argument and it says, oh, the argument for this call is a string. I don't care what the string is, it's a string. This programmer better have given me something called output that requires one string. And it goes, oh yeah, here they go, they found this right here. So I'll just call it and I'll dump the value into that, that parameter right there. Then, the next line, Java goes, oh, okay, well this is also called output, but this is using an integer. Well, this programmer better have given me something called output that uses an integer. And it goes, oh, good, it's right there. And it puts that into the parameter. So it just takes a look at the arguments, and it takes a look at the methods and their parameters, and it sorts it out for you. It's, it's very, very simple how it, how it works. Okay? This is similar, again, in math, where you have multiple functions in math. You can have the f of x and the f of y, right? And it's just switching it up based on the parameters, right? So it's kind of that similar concept there. OK. So that's overloading. And in the notes, I have the example of that as well. I have it with three different versions of make stars. Make stars with an integer, make stars with a character, and make stars with an integer and a character. That works. You can also make parameters that have, as long as they're different, right? So this one, as long as there's none that are the same, then you're fine. You could have actually also made one called make stars that had a character and an integer because that would be in a different order and it would be okay. Okay, that would still be a different version of that method. Okay, so let me wrap up today with what I like to call method methodology. Basically, when you make a method, you should be using the same programming mindset or programmatic thinking as you do when you construct a program itself. That is five steps like problem solving. Analyze what the method should do. Design your method. Code your method. Test your method. Debug anything within your method. And then document your method. And, and last class I taught you the Java doc style of documenting that is really simple. So what is this method supposed to do? It's very much like, what is the program supposed to do? The method should accomplish a simple task. 
It should do an action. Then you design it. Now again, when you design the method, this is where you think about does it need inputs, does it need outputs, right? If it needs no return information, then it can be a void method. It won't need to send anything back, okay? Maybe it does need to send something back. Maybe it needs parameters, okay? In other programming languages, they also have something called reference parameters. But Java doesn't have that, so you don't need to worry about that. But if you ever encounter something about that online when looking at methods, what are these things called reference parameters? Um, I can explain that to you, but you won't need to know that in Java. Okay, when you design your method, it should do a simple thing. Your code should no longer be one big long block of code. It should be smaller blocks of code, but more of them, okay? The name of the method should describe what it does. The parameters should describe what they are, right? Methods should be short. They shouldn't be a lot of lines of code, okay? If they are getting too long, maybe it should be broken into more methods. That's the whole idea, okay? Now, when you're building up a method, if you want to work at a certain level and you write a method and you don't have time right now to get to the code, so like say you write a method called uh, end and you want end to not only end the program but you also want to display a little goodbye, thanks for using it, you could for now leave it empty, okay? Often programmers will do that. They will design a method and at the moment they make it, just leave it empty for now and go back and fill it in later. And that is a term known as a stub, and I'm not going to test you on that. That's just for those of you who want a little bit more advanced sort of knowledge. A stub is essentially an empty method that you're going to get to later. Sometimes when you are building methods, you sometimes just write a little code to just test the method temporarily. Okay, so Sometimes when you build a method and you want to test it to make sure it works, you don't need to test it within the big program that you're writing. So sometimes programmers will write code just to test a method. And again, this is a bit more advanced, but that's called a driver, right? So you write driver code or driver software to just test methods. So like that little method we wrote called output, I mean, the example we're doing is essentially a driver. It just tests these methods. So there's this type of programming known as stub and driver programming that essentially works around methods. But that's a little more advanced, and I'm only telling you that again just in case you encounter that, uh, for those of you who like to look up sort of stuff online, that that might come up, okay? Then you document your method, okay? And we talked about that last time. The traditional way, the purpose, the pre, the post, or what I would really wrong, strongly recommend, the Javadoc style of, of commenting. And that's it. That's methods.